And this week's update from IHME on our models and analysis for the COVID epidemic, let me start by just flagging for people who use our visual tools that we've made a change to the presentation where we're showing for both the past and the forecasts uh, estimates of reported deaths, that is the COVID deaths that come through the official uh, measurement systems. And then you can toggle to looking at uh, estimates for the past and forecasts for the future of total excess mortality related to the COVID pandemic. We had previously been sort of showing first the excess mortality. Now we're, uh, because people are, more people are familiar with the numbers on reported deaths, uh, showing that as the first view. Now, when we look around the world, there's a lot happening uh, to, on the COVID front, and I think it's largely being driven, but not exclusively, by the continued spread of the Delta variant, that is B617.2. And uh, we can go through some parts of the world where we're seeing some important trends that are going to both uh, be important in terms of the people that are affected there, but also the insights about how the Delta variant uh, is unfolding. So if we start in Europe, where I think there's been a lot of attention, uh, we're continuing to see an absolutely explosive surge in the United Kingdom. Uh, it is more, it's farther along in Scotland, so that now case reports are highest levels of the whole pandemic at this point, despite moderate levels of vaccination and, and some number of people that have been previously infected. But that is spreading to England, to Wales and Northern Ireland as well. In, in, in the... Uh, on the other uh, eastern part of Europe, then we actually see that uh, the Russian Federation has the other major surge for uh, COVID. And this is happening in a population that, that's not got high levels of vaccination, but a population that has 80% um, previously infected. So it does suggest that both the Delta variant is highly transmissible, but there's a considerable degree of immune escape. The other thing that's happening in Russia in the case of, of natural infection is that deaths are tracking up uh, really in, in parallel with cases going up. The surprise in the rest of Europe is that in aggregate cases are trending down quite briskly. So even though the variant has been detected in many other countries in Europe, only in Portugal is there a slow increase in cases in the rest, uh, and Cyprus, a, a faster increase. But most of the rest of, of the countries in Europe, although the variant is present in many, we're not yet seeing things take off. So it will be important to see how that unfolds. In Southeast Asia, we're seeing uh, really large increases in Indonesia. We're also seeing steady increases that had started quite a while ago in Thailand, uh, in Cambodia. Uh, and so we expect it, that these are driven by the Delta variant and we do expect them to continue. And our forecasts therefore have quite a considerable increase in deaths in, in a number of countries in Southeast Asia. In South Asia, Bangladesh who took off uh, the um, uh, social distancing measures that had brought the, the, the surge in April under control. Uh, they came off, the surge has come back. Now they're going back to stay at home orders. Uh, we're not seeing this yet in India. There are two or three states where the decline has slowed or stopped. And so we'll have to wait and see if what's happened in Bangladesh is now going to happen in India. Uh, given the levels of vaccination, previous exposure, and the transmissibility of the Delta variant, it's quite plausible that what's unfolding in Bangladesh could spread to, uh, to the uh, many states in India in the next two or three weeks. In Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, continued surges in a number of countries, but not all. The glimmer of um, hope there is that in Uganda, which is one of the earlier surges in this wave that we think is Delta variant driven, has peaked and come down. They have had a number of social distancing measures in place. So it argues that those measures have been effective and holds out the hope that similar measures elsewhere can bring the surges that we're seeing under control. 
Uh, so, you know, the, 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 our forecasts for Sub-Saharan Africa are up a little bit, but not a lot given the trends that, that we're describing. In uh, Central America, the big news is the, the increasing number of states that we see in Mexico where uh, cases have stopped going down and now going up. Some of those surges are really quite brisk uh, with rapid increases. Others are now just at the turning point and heading up. Uh, it's somewhere near half the states in Mexico now showing increasing case numbers. That's enough that at the national level, we're also seeing the aggregate numbers turn around. The big question in Mexico is, is this due to the P1 variant spreading in from South America? or is it due to the Delta variant, 617.2, spreading in from uh, your England or, or India? And we don't know, there's very limited sequencing in Mexico. It of course makes a really big difference to the next months and into the fall for Mexico. If this is P1 driven increases and then Delta will come after, or this is currently being driven by the Delta variant, very hard to know what's the correct answer there. In South America, the trends are sort of on that, in aggregate, on the slow, steady increase up, reflecting sort of almost uh, this experience that we see in Ecuador and Peru, but also in a number of other countries in Central America, of flat or slightly increasing case numbers over a very prolonged period. And we're seeing similar patterns in a number of states in Brazil. Fortunately, some of the states in the southern cone, uh, the countries in the southern cone, you know, have started to decline. In the United States, where, of course, concern is high that the Delta variant may lead to something like what we're seeing in Scotland, we have yet to see that massive surge, you know, the, the ex ex explosive exponential growth. But we are seeing hospitalizations particularly going up in places like Missouri, Arkansas, Nevada, um, Mississippi, and a number of others. Uh, in some of those states, while hospitalizations are trending up, cases are not. We suspect the disconnect between cases and hospitalizations is because of CDC guidance to um, states and, and health providers to not test vaccinated individuals. And while we understand why that guidance was given to create an incentive for people to get vaccinated and to avoid reports of cases in the vaccinated, um, it's making it harder to track when the Delta variant is leading to a reversal in transmission. Uh, we, you know, our models for the United States show increases, but not dramatic over the next two to three months. Uh, we expect the more dramatic Delta variant increases to come later in the year as seasonality works against us as well. So that's sort of a uh, very diverse set of trends that we're seeing around the world, uh, clearly at a critical juncture in the epidemic as we race to vaccinate as many as possible while the Delta variant uh, is leading to these outbreaks in many parts uh, of uh, every region in the world.